Now that the cell has grown to a sufficient size and the DNA has been copied, the cell is ready to undergo mitosis, the division of the nucleus. The first phase of mitosis is referred to as prophase, pro meaning beginning. So to go through prophase, the chromatin condenses into chromosomes, as can be seen down below in the, in the diagram in their characteristic chromosome X shape. The centrioles, uh, these structures here, begin to move to opposite sides of the cell, and spindle fibers between those centrioles begin to, to spin this web in between the two. These spindle fibers are made of microtubules. And finally, in order for these mi uh, spindle fibers to attach to the centrioles of the chromosomes, the nuclear membrane begins to dissolve and break down, and with that, the nucleolus also disappears. So be sure to familiarize yourself with the diagram below, and when you're comfortable with all the phases, uh, the stages, and the events that take place, then examine the next diagram here, where a micrograph of cells from a plant. Here we can see individual cells. I'll map out the cell wall. This cell over here, we can see a fully intact nucleus. And within that nucleus, we have a nucleolus. And all of these, uh, this shade, light shading is, is chromatin. This, however, doesn't have a nucleus. What would be a nucleus here is, is certainly been removed. We don't see a nucleolus. And chromatin is no longer visible, but what has taken its place is the condensed form of chromosomes. We can see here that this, is, this, uh, this cell is in prophase. The second major stage is called metaphase. In metaphase, we begin to see that the cells line up along the metaphase plate. That's this region right here. The metaphase plate, or also called the equatorial plate, or the equatorial plane, there seems to be several names for the same region, uh, simply goes up and down, or down the middle of the cell, uh, 90 degrees from the, the two uh, centrioles, which have now traveled to opposite ends of the cell, and have attached uh, using these aster fibers you can see. So this uh, this lining up of the cell of the chromosomes along the equator is the hallmark of metaphase and meta of course meaning middle so now that you're comfortable with the diagram take a look at the electron uh, at the micrograph here we have again our cells and then down the middle you can see that these chromosomes are lining up along this imaginary line called the equatorial plate or metaphase plate you can also see the spindle fibers, uh, the shadow spindle fibers, uh, and here as well. And so we can see that this is this cell is clearly in the metaphase stage. When metaphase is complete, anaphase begins. Anaphase, we see the centro the centromeres of the individual chromosomes split. And as they split, we can see that each sister chromatid begins to be pulled, or at least remove, move towards the opposite end of each of these poles. And it's important you recognize that if this copy is the same as this copy, then if one of each copy of each chromosome ends up on opposite sides, every, that each of these, each pole of the cell will have a complete set of DNA. It is also important to note that these uh, individual chromatids, because they have their own centromere now, are referred to as individual chromosomes. If you can see that the, the chromatids have been separated and are moving apart, you have the hallmark of anaphase. Looking at the diagram, we can see that this is the metaphase plate going down the middle. And then none of the chroma chromosomes are lined up along this uh, metaphase plate anymore. They're all migrating now to two opposite sides of this cell. This is an anaphase cell. The last stage in mitosis is telophase. And telophase actually 
uh, several things are happening at the same time, but I want you to think of this as just the undoing of prophase. Telophase, the nuclear membrane, begins to reform around the, uh, the chromatids, now chromosomes, uh, at each pole. So now we have the formation of two nucleuses in a single cell. At the same time, the chromosomes begin to un unfold uh, into back into chromatin where it can become more useful again. They uh, notice that each side of the cell now has its own set of centrioles and that now a constricting band down the middle of the cytoplasm for both of those cells begins to form. This constricting band is referred to as a cleavage furrow. This takes place in animal cells. In a plant cell, uh, a primitive form of a, of a cell wall begins to form in between what would be a, look like a cleavage furrow. It's just a, another cell wall beginning to form in between those two. So now that you're comfortable with this idea, we have here again, here is what used to be the metaphase plate. Now we have a nucleus forming around this set of chromosomes, a nucleus forming around this set of chromosomes, and now what, where the metaphase plate used to be is now forming the cell plate in the plant cell. Again, in the animal cell, we'd see something, a very similar structure, but in this case, we'd see a dimpling on the two ends, which would give us a cleavage furrow. When mitosis is complete, the last thing that's left is to simply divide the rest of the cytoplasm. The cell has, com has copied all its DNA, has separated the copies into two separate nucleuses, and now the cells just need to complete their division process. And this is referred to as cytokinesis, where the cleavage furrow uh, completes its entire process through the cell. The cell plate for plants will complete its division of those two cells. And so we can see in the end, we end up with two daughter cells. Daughter cells meaning, of course, the product of mitosis. Here we have daughter cell number one. Here's daughter cell number two. And each of those cells should have exact copies of their DNA. That is to say that these two cells should be as equivalent as could ever be hoped for from cells. So now that you've gone through this tutorial, identify from these different micrographs uh, what stages they are. To help you, the chromosomes have been stained dark blue, chromatin start stained light blue, and the spindle fibers are all stained red. When you've done that, you can find the answers below. So now, attempt to answer the following questions. If a plant cell undergoes mitosis, but no cell plate is actually formed, what would the result be? Consider question number two. Corn cells have 20 chromosomes. If it is dividing by mitosis, how many chromosomes will be present at prophase? How about at metaphase? How many chromosomes will be at anaphase? And finally, the last question. A biologist studying corn, normally, again, had tw having 20 chromosomes, locates one, one cell in late telophase with only 19 chromosomes. Please explain how this may have occurred. Again, these three questions, make sure that you have them in your notebook um, and answered so that they can be checked in class.